you know, there's four horses of the apocalypse, and there was a rather bizarre story that showed up in my news feed today, and I thought I'd take a look at it. But the Jerusalem Post posted this by Aaron Reich today, February 9th of 2024. So I may have to change a couple of the words so I don't have to say them. But it says, A hard look at Jerusalem's spicy horse statue and its Jesus connection. Well, it doesn't have a Jesus connection at all, except for the fact that the Lord is going to come down and he's going to remove everything that offends. And this is one of those things. Icon of the week. One of the city's most unique landmarks, the horse statue in central Jerusalem, the scarlet harlot who played the harlot against God, Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots. I'm adding that in. Complete with what some would describe as a rather interestingly shaped head. Certainly stands out. Now this is pretty disgusting, so I hope you don't mind I'm telling this story. <laughs> but I think you need to know about it. And as one of the oldest cities in the world, steeped in thousands of years of history and religious significance, Jerusalem is a city of icons. Israel's capital is dotted with numerous landmarks and monuments, each one with its own unique and fascinating history that adds to the ever-evolving tapestry of culture that is Jerusalem. And then there's the horse statue. One of the city's most unique landmarks, the horse statue in central Jerusalem, complete with what some would describe as a rather interestingly shaped head, certainly stands out. What is the horse statue and where did it come from? The horse statue, officially named the Horse of Peace, is a bronze statue of a horse created made and donated by Slovenian sculptor Oscar Kogaj, was brought to the city of Jerusalem in 1997 by the Slovenian government and the Jerusalem Foundation in honor of the 3,000th anniversary of Jerusalem. It was erected in the Francis L. Hyatt Garden on King George Street, originally known as Gan Hey Menorah, in honor of the Knesset Menorah, which sat across from the original location of the Knesset building. The park is now also known as Gan Susa, or Horse Park. Nowadays, the park is home to a lawn that slopes down to a stone paved amphitheater with a shade pergola, and a natural stone waterfall. It's an ideal place for pedestrians, protesters, and exhibitions. And this horse statue. Why does the horse statue have such a distinctive shape? Let's not beat around the bush here. The horse's head looks an awful lot like a male genitalia. This is something many observers have noted with, they call it, the P word, horse, being a nickname often tossed around by English-speaking Jerusalemites. But there is a legitimate reason why the statue looks the way it does. The horse's head, and in fact its entire appearance, is meant to be reminiscent of the Venetic horses. That's Venetian. These were famous depictions of horses that date back to the late Bronze Age and early Iron Age among the Veneti, a sculpture that lives in what is now part of Italy and Slovenia. These horses can be seen on several pieces of Venetic art, including the famous Vace Setula, one of Slovenia's most important archaeological artifacts. In using the design as his model, Kogaj 
explained on his website that the result was a statue with a mild expression, a statue of a horse radiating some sort of divine peace. Not really. He further elaborated that he designed the Horse of Peace statue in order to revive the ancient culture of the Slavines, the culture of the Veneti. The statue is a portrait of human spirituality. And this spiritual theme is something Kogaj further elaborated on in a statement sent to in Jerusalem, as well as drawing a direct connection to Jesus Christ. The horse has great symbolism in early civilizations as an animal for work, an animal for war, and a representative of God's creation. He explained, describing the reason for the horse statue to be erected in Jerusalem. The Venetic horse is the horse of peace, the horse that brings the Son of God, and it was my wish to have it placed as a symbol that unites all nations. It is a symbol of humanity, of love for all living things, and this is what Jesus taught. Kogaj made several other statues like this one, which can be found at the World Trade Center in the Slovenian capital, in front of the Palace of Nations in Geneva, and in the Nebug complex in Sochi, Russia. He also created several smaller versions made of different materials, which anyone can purchase for themselves. What do Jerusalemites think of the horse statue? With its location on King George Street, and yes, that would be King George of Great Britain that that street's named after, right at the top of the entrance to the bustling Ben Yehuda Street. It is not surprising that many Jerusalemites have fond or rather hilarious memories and opinions of the statue. Ah, yes, noted Gabriel Urban Witz on Facebook in response to In Jerusalem's query, the horse with the questionable face statue. Another commenter, Zippy Often Fodeman, noted how Seemingly ridiculous it was that this statue was in a children's playground. We used to go there drunk in the middle of the night and climb on it, recounted Esther Levin. Molly Wiesenthal made a far less subtle reference saying, We always asked, what's wrong? Why the schlong face? One Jerusalemite compared it to Blucifer, the iconic large blue Mustang, it's actually a Bronco sculpture, located at the Denver International Airport in Colorado. And that's actually the white Bronco. It's supposed to be Thunder, the mascot of the Denver Broncos. And it's it stands on its hind legs, you know, rising up in the air as you're driving into the airport. And it's got glowing red eyes. And people make a big deal out of it. I guess they're calling it Blucifer now, which I did not know. <laughs> I enjoy pointing out the phallic appearance of the horse to anyone I'm with when I pass by, noted another Jerusalemite. I like using it as a landmark to give me an excuse to explain to people that there is a horse statue that has a pea face. And you know what I'm talking about, the male genitalia. Now, they have one of these Venetian horses in this um, place called the Slovenj Gredek. The statue of the Venetian horse is one of the most well-known monuments. The Venetian horse in Slovenj Gredek is the work of the sculptor Oscar Kogaj. Oscar Kogaj is a world-famous artist and a sculptor from Slovenia. His sculpture of a horse beautifies the center of the Slovenj 
red deck from where we also see the main square and the Church of St. Elizabeth. It was made in 1992 and put on a strong stone platform in front of the Kuroshka Museum. The sculptor was so attracted by the shape of the horse that he tried to make an almost life-size figure of a Venetian horse. The artwork of the Venetian horse is one of the most pronounced artworks from the early iron, the Hallstatt period. To the Veneti, the ancient people of northern or northeastern Italy, the horse meant an almost divine being. The form reflects the horse and its spirited nature. This statue quickly attracted the attention of the public, and today its supernatural counterparts can be found in several places in Ljubljana, in the city square in Slovenj Gredek, in front of the United Nations Palace in Geneva, in Nieburg at Sochi on the Black Sea, and in front of the former parliament in Jerusalem. It is also called the horse of peace, of the spiritual horse. It embraces the ancient culture of the Veneti and depicts the spirituality of man. Veneti were said to be the best in horse breeding. So I guess that's why the shape of the head is in the shape of the you know what. So, <laughs> I don't mean to be funny, but, you know, to connect this to Jesus Christ is really blasphemy on their part. It is, in fact, very interesting how a relatively small thing, such as a horse statue, can positively mark a city in such a short time, and it has quickly managed to become one of the more important cultural symbols of Slovenj Gradec. Are the Slovenes descendants of Slavs or Veneti? Have you ever heard of the Venetian theory? There is a widespread autochronous theory of the origin of Slovenes. Namely, in the 1980s, some researchers hypothesized that Slovenes were not the descendants of the Slavic people, but of the Veneti. Slovenes are said to be the proto-Slavic people of Veneti. The history and evidence speak in favor of the Slavic theory. And they have a picture of this horse, but it looks like it's just been cast and that it's wrapped in some sort of white wrapping material to protect it while they take it out to mount it on the platform. Okay, so they say in the Jerusalem Post that this horse statue, the horse of peace, has a connection to Jesus Christ, which it does not. And we know that Jesus is coming on a white stallion, a white horse, and it's going to be grand and beautiful. It's not going to be looking like this phallic horse. And what an abomination to be right there in Jerusalem on King George Street. If you know King George Street, you know that that's where the largest synagogue is in all of Israel called the Great Synagogue. This horse and this particular piece is called the Venetian Horse. And there are five of these in existence in Slovenj Gradec in the World Trade Center in Ljubljana, in front of the Palace of Nations in Geneva. Now, you know, aren't they always meeting in 
Switzerland with the WEF in Davos. The former parliament building in Jerusalem and in Sochi, or Sochi in Russia. I'm sorry, some of these names are kind of far out there that I haven't heard before. But Slovensk is designated as a peace messenger city and participants in regular meetings to promote peace and understanding between participating nations. So I want to reiterate what that article in Jerusalem Post said. It said that the Venetian horse is the horse of peace, the horse that brings the Son of God. The horse that brings the judgment of the Son of God. You know, you can't mock God, and you can't put up a statue that is pure blasphemy. Let me just show you the Venetian horse. So what is the symbolism of the white horse in Revelation? Horses usually represent something to do with war. Seldom will you find a horse in scripture that doesn't belong in battle. In fact, this is likely why Jesus confused people when he made his triumphal entry on a donkey instead of a war horse. He made it clear that during his first time on earth he would not be a warlord or conqueror of the romans white tends to represent something righteous or pure in the bible and the fact that the horseman of the apocalypse rides it may show that he's operating under a pseudo righteousness to deceive more people crowns as one may guess represent authority or victory and they actually represent the power and authority of the king. The horseman of the apocalypse wears one crown, showing he will conquer for a time. Jesus, on the other hand, wears many crowns, the ultimate victor and power and authority. And bows, like bows and arrows, they tend to represent strength and battle. The fact that the horseman doesn't have arrows shows that he uses some deceitful tactics of peace to sway his followers for a time. Now, let me just say right here, once again, that that horse is on King George Street, which is named after King George of Britain. And that horse is the horse of peace and it's supposed to represent that Jesus, the Son of God, is coming, or something to that effect. And it says that we can contrast this with Jesus. Out of Jesus' mouth comes a sword, a reference to Scripture being double-edged. And Jesus speaks truth and does not deceive like the first horseman. We should know about the two white horses for a number of reasons. First, we need to watch out for the first white horse. Although Jesus does not appoint political leaders and allows for certain people to have power for a time, we cannot place our hope and trust in them alone. So the two horses and riders share many similarities, but Satan is hard at work trying to deceive the world if we don't regularly immerse ourselves into scripture into the double-edged sword We can find ourselves deceived by a similar but different message So Revelation has two riders on white horses, but we only want to follow the king of kings and they share many similarities but ultimately one tries to deceive the world and the other is faithful and true. The very fact that this horse's face is a phallic symbol and that it's in front of these governmental bodies that are trying to broker peace to the world 
And actually, the Sanhedrin says that the whole purpose of the building of the third temple is that it will bring peace on earth. So this horse of peace that they've put there in Jerusalem and in these other places of importance, the World Trade Center in Geneva, um, shows that they're trying to get all the nations together and bring a certain type of peace that will never be peace. The only true king that comes on a white horse brings eternal peace and he's who we want to follow. But I just couldn't believe the blasphemy of them allowing this despicable statue and then saying that it has anything at all to do with Jesus is such a joke. Another thing that's kind of awful about it is that the people in Jerusalem are making fun of it and laughing at it. And, you know, it's got a sign near it that says Jerusalem, the horse garden, peace horse, outdoor sculpture. So it's strange that it would be this swag backed misshapen horse, misshapen hooves, not to mention the face. And we know that Jesus comes back on a gallant stallion, a white horse that's beautiful. So I did that very extensive video about the horse that's kind of green, uh, chloros in color, that the royal family in Britain has been known to use for years. And I did a whole video on that. If you want to see that, just, you know, you'll have to look for it. I don't know where it is. <laughs> anyway, I thought I'd bring this to your attention, that this horse of peace that's supposed to represent the return of the Son of God is sitting right there in Jerusalem by the old Knesset building. Not sure what you think about this, but it's interesting that it's called the Horse of Peace and they're trying to bring all the nations there with the Sanhedrin.